What's up guys? BDBS here and welcome back to Feed the Bitches. I am currently all alone on the server. Hmm, hurdy hurdy hur, so sad. But uh, I thought I'd take you through a few uh, little updates that have been going on. So, uh, I can't remember if I showed you guys this. We have a fully automatic XP grinding setup. So you've got a turtle here. With, uh, let's see if I can... Uh, no, uh, there's something you can do, hold control and F to cancel their thing. I can't remember. Oh, he has a very simple program. He attacks up, uh, he, all the items he picks up get stored in his inventory, and when any item hits the 14th slot, he drops every single item down. Oh, uh, I know I did show you guys this, yeah. And we have these brain in the jars, which are uh, very useful, they hold experience. You can punch them to get a little bit out, or you well you can right click them to get a little bit out, or you can break them and they drop all 30 levels, like however much they're holding basically. Uh, we've just recently acquired an uncrafting table, which allowed me to get some lovely formium armor. Basically, uh, punched one of these out, got 30 levels, enchanted it, if I didn't get what I wanted, uncrafted it, and it's really easy, to all you have to do to uncraft it is put it there, and then pick that up and put it back down, and then you can recraft it. Because you can use this like a crafting window. So say I was on crafting a furnace like this. Literally all I was doing is this. Which I don't actually want that furnace. That's a fantastic way of wasting 16 levels. 16 expensive levels as well. Shut up. Give me back levels. I need like 38 levels or so. I just want them. There we go. Just put them guys back down. But yeah, that's how I got myself the, the armor I have here, uh, well, apart from the Boots of the Traveller. What I did with these is I randomly enchanted them, and uh, no, 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 that wasn't that, was it? Was it? Yes, it was, yes. Yeah, I randomly enchanted my boots. I got projectile, haste, feather falling, and repair. I then put unbreaking on them, and I'm happy with that. So I've got a uh, fire protection repair, blast protection repair, <laughs> Oh, protection, repair, aquafinity, respiration of thorns. And um, so I'm laughing at the name of these. I named these um, last night while I had not slept for two, three days. And uh, oh, that's, that's, that's a good name. I like it. That, uh, that tickles me, that does. Uh, let's see, the farm currently isn't running because Metal Mosher fucking killed my golem. Uh, in case you didn't know, if you attack them, they can die. The only way to pick them up is to use a Vond. Ah, I have a guy here I would like to show you as well, so let me grab my Vond. So I've been going pretty heavy on the uh, Thorncraft stuff. Come here, you. Ah, no. Give me that. So what we have here is a Clay Golem worker. And if you uh, remember Thorncraft, you'll remember Clay... Well, if you know Thorncraft, you'll know Clay Golem workers... Um, keep an inventory stacked. So here we have an inventory with stone bricks in it. And I would also like to show you uh, another new item. So let me just harvest some of my free cobble farm. I showed you this guy, you guys, this igneous extruder, barrel, infinite free cobblestone, pretty much lag free for the server. So uh, let me just go into my thaumaturge's bag. And uh, yeah, the noise from these guys is horrendous when it just constantly plays. So here I have a magic hand mirror. And you'll notice there's one just here above the uh, furnace as well so if I say put some cobblestone in there it comes out so the magic mirrors are created with a portable hole I thought I heard an eating sound and then they're linked together through a um, <laughs> they're linked together by you place one of them and then you right click it with the other one and it links those two together and then when you can place the second one and basically when they're um, placed like that you can throw an item into it like physically throw an item into it and then it comes out the other one or you can craft it with a wand to make the handle and uh, it gives you infinite free item travel I mean it drops them out as blocks so it's not as useful as some things but you can have a, uh, a hungry chest to pick them up like it does right there, picks up the items and uh, yeah so I mean I've actually d decided on an idea for my sorting system 
in my own base when I uh, diverge on the solver, diversify on the server, and move out and away from uh, Spawn Town, which has really not got anything going on yet. I mean, uh, the coolest thing we have here right now is probably the Wisp Farm, and this is just awesome. I love these wisps. I have so much wispy essence. Like I am actually, oh, I actually have a design for a farm for them as well. Like I've got all this wispy essence here. I have an actual uh, design for a farm, so I can automatically kill them, get their wispy essence, like barrel it up. One second. Sorry about that, guys. That was Metal Mosher messaging me saying he's coming back on. There he is. Oh, you fucker! Oh, that's sort of the Zephyr. How I love it. Fuck you, fly! See, it doesn't work too well on him. He has an electric, uh, an advanced electric jetpack. I keep trying to get him with uh, the portable hole to make him fall. Ha ha ha! We, uh, I actually have a very nice idea. No, no, you will not portal gun me. Yeah, you want to portal gun me? How about I stand somewhere you can't portal gun me from? Ha ha ha! Uh, oh, he looks like he's hiding. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. I was going to show you this guy, the golem. So uh, you place him on an inventory, and he'll keep it stock, keep it stocked. But he recognizes the sides. So say you have a furnace. If you place him on the top, he will keep the top of the furnace fueled. If you place him on the uh, side. He'll keep, uh, he'll like keep the side field, which you don't need. If you place him on the bottom, he'll keep the bottom field. So you can have pretty much fully automatic setups because you can have a. Uh, basically, I'll give you a little glimpse of what my idea is. So what you do is you have him sat on the top here, and you tell him to keep the inventory stacked with cobblestone, and then you tell him where the cobblestone comes from, which is white and uh, there's a white marker under here so let's put a cobblestone in there he should go and grab it and then he'll keep it stopped he'll put it in the top of the furnace and then it'll get cooked and then you have this furnace with say a black one underneath it and then you have another one of these guys oh sorry marker blocks yeah you know you guys know marker blocks used in one more single player world uh... where's my... there it is, any eye uh, Markers are very easy to make. You use a wool and uh, coloured plank, uh, plank, sorry, coloured wool and planks, and you get two. So anything you want, you just use that colour, and then you can specify golems to work on different colours. So once this cobblestone is cooked, I can have like a black marker under there, and have another one of these guys who is set to collect stone from a black market area, and he'll take it out of there and he'll like put it into a chest or something. That is the basic idea for my sorting system, and I've also had an amazing idea which I can't wait to implement. But yeah, I have this guy, uh, basically he detects the sides of the inventory, so if you, you have to put him on the top of a barrel and he will fill the barrel up. Now let's tell him to collect smooth stone, not smooth stone, sorry, stone brick from any white. There is a white marker under here, and uh, all I have to do is turn this onto low and it will auto craft all the stone brick inside it and he will fill this barrel up which means I can throw in as much cobble as I want at once like this, I've actually been testing and it appears there is an internal buffer inside this thing but I have no idea how big it is I've thrown in 64 stacks two or three times and it just seems to spit out pretty much 64 stacks unless you run out of visa in the area then it looks like some of it melts inside the thing but yeah, this, <coughs> like, Thorncraft has so much more in it than I originally thought. There's so much more detail, like, so many more little things you can get into. And I've been setting up some chests here. Are you ready for this? Right, these are my enchanted books. All good. So, like, wand enchants or level fours on pretty much anything. And then we have another one as well. Looting, efficiency. Like, I am going to be, I've got a charging book there, awesome, I'm going to be such the magic man, I've got like 19 unbreaking books, 
I'm going to be such the magic man that I'm going to be able to go around and uh, do stuff like, oh, I don't know, I'm going to be able to offer an enchanting service. Anyone can come along and in, uh, give me a tool, maybe pay a small price, you know, some, uh, some thormium. I've actually got an automatic system that could work quite well for that. But it's not Thorncraft entirely because it relies on like an obsidian pipe or a transposer to pick an item up. And it's basically like someone could gain access to my house by creating Thormium. So it will say, there'll be a sign by a cauldron and it will say like, uh, throw um, one metal and two, ma two magic. So, you know, like a Vise shard or something like that and they throw it in and then uh, they hit it with a wand and it creates thormium and it's picked up and goes through a detection system to be fair you can use these guys for detection systems all you have to do is have the item here them here and a pressure plate here and they'll walk across the pressure plate to pick the item up <coughs> and that's a detection system, that's a roundabout detection system but if you were running uh, just thorncraft that would work fantastically my god I love this mod <clears throat> and I think working with Zycraft as well gives me the ability to have you know liquids and stuff which I don't really need for anything oh bye Metal Mosher thanks for saying goodbye yeah I don't really need liquids for anything but uh, it gives me access to the Fabricator and the Zycorium soil which I cannot wait to start using properly like um this farm was actually too good so we, we emptied this chest out about 20-30 times it was just so full of shit all the time so yeah I just thought fuck it uh, I might as well turn it off and also Metal Mosh killed my uh, my dude I hear a wisp not a clue uh, anyway now what else did I want to show oh yeah I want to show you guys the portable hole uh, so, you, I'm sure you know the portable hole. It's very useful. It's made, it makes portable holes. Basically, it's um, quite ender pearl intensive to make. Hey, he's back. But it allows you to uh, basically remove uh, solid blocks from the world by um, sending them to a different dimension briefly. Oh, he's uncrafting something. He's using the uncrafting tr trick to make an amazing pickaxe. Hee <laughs> hee, I see you! <laughs> but yeah, I love the. Uh, I've started using the portable hole a lot. I mean, uh, it's very useful for stuff like, say, I wanted to look in the grinder, but I didn't want to actually break a block to get in there, you know? So all I have to do is come up to here, say, I want to look in just above here. And now I can see what's going on in the grinder. Uh, I can't be shot through it because the blocks are still technically there. You can't actually shoot arrows through them. Oh, you know what? <laughs> who needs who needs ladders to get back down? I have a sword of wind. Yeah, the right-click function on this actually stops you taking full damage, which is really nice. But yeah, I can. Um, you know, I want to go through here, so I can just do this. Ah, balls. Where am I? Okay. I'm inside a wall somewhere. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> um. Me, no. Reiki portal. Hmm. That was a bit dodgy. Ah, you fucker. Is it going to jump me through every time? Again? Come on. Right. I'm home. Oh, balls. It's the one bad thing about not being able to fly. Oh no, don't remove it. No, I can't get back. Break that. There we go. 
now I have to run home. But I might be able to demonstrate some uh, features of the portable hole while I'm running home actually. Because one thing I found it very useful for is uh, one, caving, and two, mountaineering. But all you have to do is find a point in the mountain that is small enough and you don't need to climb over it, you can just walk through it. I mean, it, it consumes Vs to recharge itself, but uh, that's that's a good thing. Especially since, you know, if you're Thorncrafting, you're probably going to have a pretty decent V supply. And as long as you're not playing in an old world generated before a whole bunch of different things, uh, you're going to have aura nodes everywhere, which we do. Oh yeah, I've absolutely raped the aura in this area. The Infernal Furnace may not take a lot of Vs very quickly, but when you use a lot, as much as it, of it as I do, like cooking up, you know, 10, 15 stacks of uh, stone brick at a time, then it tends to go pretty fast. Oh, nice! He got himself an ore magnet! Ooh, what we got? Ooh, I love those! Tight! Where's the shift key gone? There it is. Oh, fuck you and your portals. Don't trust your portals. Ooh, where does this lead? Ah, where does it lead? Oh, let's uh, do a little bit of mining with this. So, have I showed you guys these native ore clusters before? Uh, it's a feature unique to the um, pickaxe of the core, and it's a very nice feature actually. Basically, whenever you mine ores, um, not all ores, I'll have to check the NEI here for this, uh, native ore clusters, so iron, copper, tin, silver, lead, and gold. Whenever you mine those ores with the pickaxe of the core, there's a small chance of you getting a native ore cluster, and what you do with a native ore cluster is basically um, a double ore of that type, so you smelt it to get two iron, and that's all you can do with it, you just smelt it. And I mean, they look pretty cool as well. And uh, if you don't have all these other mods, you know, like uh, thermal expansion with the pulverizer, uh, industrial craft, with the macerator, which we don't have because it's too expensive and we have a pulverizer, or you know, the induction smelter to get two at once. Basically, if you don't have a system to get two at once out of your ores, that is uh, the pickaxe of the core is a really nice way of doing that. Mainly because it just uh, gives you a random chance of getting two at once. Now, this is something built by Metal Mosher, and it looks like it's gone out. Hmm. So this is called a RAF furnace, it's not an actual proper multi-block or anything, and uh, me and Metal built this earlier, he did the turtle stuff, I, put, I built the box. <laughs> and um, this is basically used for creating dark iron, um, I'll just show you inside here. Uh, so a RAF furnace, it's pretty simple, you just build a 3x3 cube of... Uh, what's this called, nether brick and uh, you have a two spaces here in the middle you use your wrath igniter to light a fire and you leave this one open and then you place a block of iron in there and uh, I'll just test to see whether it is actually out or whether it's just a like a bug of some kind do we have a block of iron around anywhere? of course not because metal washer would never keep a block of iron around where I could get my filthy hands on it apparently Oh well, I can't show you, but basically what, what it does is, um, uh, I think it's called Startup. Oh no, it's running already, it's typical. Yeah, it's running already. So what this turtle does is it takes a block of iron out of um, the bottom chest, it uh, places it down in front of it, and then it waits three seconds it mines the block, it then checks to see if it's the same as the dark iron block 
<gasps> a hoe of grow and knowledge fragments. I love you, Metal Mosher. You are awesome. He's been doing some explorings, apparently. And he found me a free hoe of growth. Awesome. Oh, I need to get my wisp killing wand. This wand of lightning is the balls for killing wisps. Oh, yes. That is excellent. Don't blow me. Ah! Ah, not cool. Oh, not even less cooler. Oh, fuck. Help? I have fallen and I can't get up. Um. Hmm. Oh, that. Ah! Oh, portal. Yes, let's go through that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's better. Uh, yeah, this wand I've actually been playing around with quite a bit. And it's basically a potency 3 charging wand. So, a uh, lightning wand. So it will charge. Uh, from the Vise to restore its um, durability, I suppose. It'll automatically, basically, automatically recharge itself. And uh, it packs a hell of a hit, I must say. Like, these wisps take two uh, arrows from, like, my Power 5 bow. And that's a lot of damage. And this not only does fairly significant damage, considering it's uh, infinite durability, ranged, and extremely cheap. It's, uh, you know, it can be used like this, nice and effectively. And uh, it's a good weapon for fighting wisps, mainly because it's pretty much exactly what they use. It's like a lightning bolt. Yeah, bring it on, see? Oh, I've got a bug there where the wand kept firing. Yeah, it's just it's a bolt of lightning that shoots out and attacks things, but it tracks. So all I have to do is aim it vaguely towards the wisp, and it will hit it. Unlike an arrow, where you have to account for, you know, trajectory and distance and stuff like that. And of course, wisps move pretty damn fast. So it does one hit a sheep. That's nice. What about cows? Yeah, one hit a cow as well. So it does at least five hearts. Well, 10 damage at a time. But yeah, I'm getting myself a whole set of Turmium tools. And this Wand of Lightning is one of them. And I actually want you guys to name my equipment. So I've got the Seeing Eye Glasses. And then I've got the Blast Protection Chest Plate. The Fire Protection Thormium Leggings. The Epic Awesomeness of my Boots of the Traveller. I have Charging, wand of, uh, charging Potency Wand of Lightning. I has my amazing sword, which just needs one thing. Ooh, Metal found something cool. What did you find? What did you get? What did you get? Oh, I'm interested now. Oh, okay, that kind of worries me. <laughs> um, okay, anyway. Yeah, I've got my um, Sword of the Zephyr, which just needs another level of sharpness on it. I have my Pickaxe of the Core, which is perfect as well. And let's see, I'm probably not going to keep my bow for much longer. I'm probably going to start using my wands properly. I'm getting another pickaxe of the core, which is going to be uh, Silk Touch, just because I can. I've got a Charging Potency Wand of Frost, a Charging Potency Treasure Wand of Excavation, and a Charging Potency Treasure Wand of Equal Trade. I also have a uh, Repair to Scoop and Grafter. And I have uh, more Thormium here to make myself a full set of uh, glowing, well, purple glowing purple armor that just looks badass. Put get my sword out here. This is the wand of a battle match. This is the uh, the garb of a battle match right here. But, oh, <laughs> yeah, blew the little guy off. Having having some fun at a midget convention, blowing the little guys off. This is what a battle match looks like. Go away, I'm presenting to camera. So yeah, I want you guys to uh, name some of my gear. Because I've got some awesome gear and I would love to uh, see the names you can come up for it. 
It doesn't have to be hilarious. It can be like awesome, like badass sounding. It can be awe inspiring. You motherfucker. He has not just. He has. He's found a second portal gun. I hate you so much. I hate you more than words can describe. I am going to eat your flesh. No, just no. That is so uncool. You see what I mean about how everybody is more lucky than I am? I went mining for four hours in the twilight forest and a couple of hours in the overworld and did some exploring to find silverwood trees and stuff like that. I found nine dungeons, a couple of Thorncraft dungeons. The best piece of loot I got was some knowledge fragments. And that motherfucker goes out for ten minutes and he finds an uncrafting table in uh, a random hollow hill and then he goes out for like what was he gone for? Two? Three minutes? Five max? And he found a fucking portal gun. Oh. <sighs> so guys, uh, Metal Mosher has been talking to me and he has uh, very kindly offered to give me a portal gun at a bit of a price. Oh, you motherfucker. Oh, I'm going to get him so bad when I have a portal gun. Uh, let's see. What is... Where's the... Thank you. Oh! <sighs> yeah, I really shouldn't be uh, uploading a video while I'm playing. I tend to lag a little bit. But, um... Yeah, let me just show you... What he's... Uh, what he wants for the portal gun. That he found... The second one on this server that he found because he is the luckiest bastard ever. Where is it? Uh, oh man, I don't even know where you. I will end you, Metal Mosher. I will fucking end you. Um, where is my other bag? Ooh, this not good. Uh, one minute, guys. Right guys, panic averted, I um, I was trying to find this canvas bag right here and uh, I actually had to watch back through my episode to find out where I put it, turns out I put it in here, but can you guess what from this he wants as his uh, trade cost? Let me give you a hint, it's the book, this enchanted book. He wants that for the portal gun. And even though I kind of don't want to trade it to him, because it's the only one I've ever... Like, I believe it's like the only one I've ever legitly got. I kind of don't want to trade it to him. But, uh... I think I'm going to. Mainly because, you know, if I don't think I'm actually going to be using it, because anything I want Silk Touch on, I can get Silk Touch on. Apart from if I can get it on my sword, if I can get Silk Touch on my sword, the deal's off. Because that's just another enchant I can put on my sword. And I kind of want every enchant I can on there. Uh, where's the grinder? Over here. Oh, Wisp. Uh, wisp Killer. There we go. Uh, I'm, I might just have to tell him the deal's off. Um, one second. Silk Touch. No, I can't. Right. And I've just realised that um, when I started recording this episode, I put my gain on my microphone, that's like the sensitivity, up really, really high. So uh, all the typing and everything, drop it first, all the typing I've been doing is uh, extremely loud and I have to apologise for that. I hope you guys can, uh, I hope you guys made it to this point. Drop it. What's he doing? What is he? Oh, I see. He's bringing a chest. 
So what's the deal? Oh look, it's got all his enchanted books in it. Ooh, free books. <laughs> yeah, I think he realised that pretty fucking quick there. Oh, uh, so I think he wants to do a chest trade. Now I wonder if I can dupe him and give him a not silk touch book. I don't think I have one on me, honestly. I don't think no, I don't. God damn it. So You know what? I could just do this. Ha ha <laughs> Oh I win. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. There you go. Here's your silk touch book. Enjoy. He's jumping for joy along with me. Hey look, now I have a portal gun. Oh, that's awesome. I have a portal gun. And I didn't have to go through all the rigmarole of making it. Uh, honestly, I think these things are too expensive. <gasps> I can uncraft it. I can uncraft my portal gun, which means I can get a miniature black hole, which I can uncraft. Oh, shards. Well, thank you, dear sir. All I wanted was the uh, the miniature black hole. Oi, you! All I wanted was the miniature black hole, because then I can uncraft that to get myself the nether star, which I can then craft. Where's he gone? Uh, I can then craft that to get myself the uh, Wand of the Thaumaturge, which is exactly why I wanted it, and you know what, we're going to end the episode off by getting a Wand of the Thaumaturge. Ah, uh, you know, I think that's worth it, not having to fight the Wither, and being able to get the Wand of the Th is that it? Yeah. I just need 32 magic, and another Wand of the Adept, which means I'm going to need to make another Wand of the Adept. And that takes four coloured shards. I can never remember which order the colours are. I think it's yellow, blue, red, green, something like that. Like yellow, blue, red, green. No, that's definitely wrong. That just looks wrong. Um, this episode's getting too long. Damn, I wanted to keep these short. I always want to keep these episodes short. Oh, <laughs> he's left the game again. Oh, no, I got right. Yes, I got the right, no, the right one. Now I just need some magic essentia. So, how much do I need? 16, uh, 16, isn't it? Yeah. So, let's do do these shards. And you know what? Let's just do eight dull shards. Uh yeah, let's just chuck eight, eight dull shards in. And uh by the way, little pro tip for you for thorn crafting, never leave your cauldrons full. When you're not using them, I could totally chuck that in there to get some purists. Yeah, I um, I had a bag, canvas bag, full of enchanted books, and I accidentally threw it in, and now I no longer have that canvas bag. Actually, you know what? This is the first one I made, and it's gonna be the best one I have always. So now we just need some more magic. I never really know what to use for magic. I actually have an idea, but it is probably going to fill the uh, atmosphere with all kinds of terrible flux. And that idea is enchanted books. Because uh, an enchanted book has a lot of magic. It's uh, four, two magic ascent here per level. So a level four gives you eight. So say we take, oh I don't know, uh, something simple. Disjunction only has knowledge and magic. So if we get ourselves eight levels of disjunction, so, uh, by the way, the best way to sort for enchanted books is use the uh, search feature here. So that's uh, 3 and 6, and now we just need a disjunction 2, which I know there is in there somewhere, because I fucking got it. There's a disjunction 1, oh wow, disjunction, 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 hmm. I chose disjunction because it doesn't have much in the way of uh, secondary things, but I suppose a Vorpal will do. So, 16. We don't need 16, we need 32, don't we? <coughs> God damn it. <coughs> Herped up, I'm a retard. So, uh, 6, 12, 18, 24, uh, 
study and then just a level one which we have a disjunction one in here don't we which is right there 32 welcome back to counting with BTBS you uh, we don't count normally in the, on this show we count in you know multiples of six until we get bored and then we just count in whatever the hell we want so yeah I've actually decided to start using some enchanted books for uh, magic like they're a sentier and stuff like that basically because uh, well we have two diamond chests full so yeah wand of the thaumaturge that's that made and it auto filled with a thousand beasts so the next thing that I need to start doing is I need to get another nether star and then I need to move that fucking aura node somewhere somewhere out of the way possibly inside a mountain so that it can't spawn wisps but uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed the episode, uh, I hope you're not too mad at me for trading away that Silk Touch book, but honestly, I don't need it, if I want one, I can just uh, enchant for Silk Touch, because the only thing I want Silk Touch on is my second pickaxe of the core, uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the episode, I hope you've learnt a little bit, and remember, if you did enjoy the video, you can always go ahead and leave me a like, and uh, I will love you a long time, or short time, but it will be better. Oh god, that's some big metal in my face. <laughs> oh god, a I, 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 good metal's not on the server. That could have been all good. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Peace out.